This is our take on that like desert island one piece of gear that you just would not be able to do what you do creatively without. Mm -hmm. And it can be any and everything uh, we've thought about narrowing the scope over the years. And we found it more fun to just open it up to any and everything, you know, that you find that kind of propels you as a songwriter, musician, guitar player, whatever it is. Um, gotcha. Do you have something that comes to mind? Yeah, it's easy. It would be my guitar, my my Rickenbacker 360. Um, Ooh, cool. It's it's, it's, uh, it's it's a special guitar to me. I, it's there's a funny story around kind of why it's it's my like the guitar that I play because it's not really a guitar that people would play on hardcore or, or even like punk or rock really um, that often. But when I was in the blood brothers, we had just finished recording young, the album young machetes, which was our final record. Mm -hmm. yep. And we had all of our gear, all of our gear, like everything because we packed it up from the studio and we parked it at our drummer's, our drummer's house like in like kind of like a suburb of seattle like not like a far really nice suburb but like outside of the city and yeah it was the year that murder city devils were doing like their first reunion uh coming back after many years of not playing and they were playing this festival called capitol hill block party and we they asked us to play like they were doing a, a surprise secret show at the showbox theater like that but didn't that the next day and we were going to play it with them and so we were like crap we need to rehearse so we went to our drummer's house we unpacked all our gear we went in his house we rehearsed we packed it all up back into the trailer because we were going to go the next day to the showbox we went and saw murder city devils play at the capitol hill block party and then when mark our drummer got home he texted us all and he was like hey did someone come pick up the van and it oh, was like, no. this is like, yeah, this is like midnight, oh, 1230 and turned out someone stole the van and trailer from his fucking driveway, drove it around the block. Tale as old as time. Damn. It. <laughs> yeah, I know. Drove around the block into some like kind of like covered parking area, used our tire iron, busted a hole in the trailer and like funneled out like all of my guitars, Morgan's basses, which was like probably, I want to say like eight eight guitars like like all of my guitars oh, like from like the time yeah, i was yeah. playing guitar until you know 10 years into our band i won't even tell you what was stolen but oh i know i i almost like i almost <laughs> wanted to morbid curiosity wanted to ask but i don't want you to go down that, that dark memory lane yeah um but my my oldest brother Sonny, he was borrowing my Rickenbacker that I had, which was not even a guitar that I played that oh, much shit. in the band. Like I, I barely played it, which mm -hmm. is why I like how to let my brother borrow it. That was like, okay, like I need a guitar. And so that just kind of like became my guitar. That was the only one left. <laughs> yeah, it was like the only one I had. And I, I think oh, I got man. I got I got some insurance money and I bought another guitar, like a I think it was a like a sixty five junior. It was awesome. It was white with the one P90. And then I, that, I had those two guitars and I was like, I'm not going to invest in more guitars because like, it just sucks when they, something bad happens. I'm going to just like not deal with this. And when I was playing in Cold Cave, we sent our van and trailer ahead of us to some show in New York. And I think Hunter Bergen was playing in the band and London May from Sam Hain was playing drums and someone had parked the van somewhere in Brooklyn, like Williamsburg and someone broke in, stole Hunter's like signature P base and my 65 junior from the trailer. Oh, so, the, no. so then I really did go down to just having my Rickenbacker again. So it's just like, it's, it's been my guitar and, and over the years, like it's just, I'm so comfortable playing it. Like I, I love it. It's great. You can play it acoustically if you need to, like, it's just, so that right. would be the piece I would take with me. That's awesome. Amazing. I tell people all the time, like I do a, a weird Alp kind of parody band with this, this comedian friend of mine, Jonah Ray. I don't know if you've heard of him, but, but we did a show the other day and he, he took my guitar and my amp back to his house. And I was like, dude, the only thing that's important to me outside of my wife is this guitar. So please, can you just take it inside? And we have an inside <laughs> joke, like an inside joke about it now, because I just like, 
I always ask like, which seems funny because it's like, well, if it's that important, you should just take it yourself. Um, <laughs> but situationally, like it, it, it just like it's it's turned into an inside joke with him and I. But it's it's truly like the only material thing that I own that I I would really be sad if I lost today. Well, we'll have to. Yeah. Do you have it nearby, or it, I'm going to have to get you to send some pictures or some video? I'll send you a photo of it. Point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, amazing. Yeah, that would be that would be awesome. I love it. Does it still have the stock pickups and everything in it? Any any sweet mods? It's the same guitar we bought. I bought it when we went to do Burn Piano Island Burn, uh, Blood Brothers album. Mm. Ross Robinson took us to True Tone in Santa Monica, and we basically bought the whole fucking store. Like, I, I think our bill was <laughs> was thirty grand when we walked out of there. And a lot of those guitars oh, Ross, that I bought, yes. yeah, a lot of those guitars were the ones that got stolen many years later. But um, my my Rickenbacker was was we bought there brand new. I think it's probably like a two thousand two. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's got my blood, sweat and tears in it at this point. So dude, that's so good. What a great yeah. answer. Oh man. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you, dude. <laughs> I can't, good. I can't, I want to, <laughs> yeah. I want to see a picture of it. I, I'm, I'm picturing that. And, uh, I mean, I guess we'll, uh, we'll pour one out for all those, uh, poor, poor, yep. expensive lost souls over the years. I've had plenty. I wonder where they end up. Like, where did those, where did they send them to fucking India or China or like, it's just another, like, are they in Lithuania? getting like sold there like where do you how do you steal guitars and resell them the reality is probably much simpler now i think it's a little harder with serial numbers and all of that right you know it's like if you see it pop up on the internet you yeah. can just message someone and be like what's the serial number but yeah i mean once upon a time especially years ago you know what i mean like it, it just goes to a pawn shop or it just goes to like some secondhand music, you know, mom yeah. and pop music dealer in the next city over and uh -huh. you never see it again. You know what I mean? Or it went on Craigslist for a while for like a stupid good deal. And yeah, you know, and Just that's even moved. worse to be like, damn, you know, I hope whoever has this really enjoys the hell out of it. Yeah. I remember like fe feeling targeted at the time too, because uh, we had our young machetes master CD it wasn't released mm -hmm. yet, but it was like we had the master and then it in got the leaked. Van? Yeah, it got leaked shortly after that because they took it. Oh shit. So it was missing too. So it was like it really felt like somebody knew because he lived in like a cul-de-sac. Like it was not It was an inside job. Are you saying it was an inside job? Are we are we about to go on the are we about to launch a serial esque true crime podcast yeah. sub series yeah. with Cody right now? I think we are. <laughs> yeah, Cody. inside job. That, yeah. Oh wow. man. <laughs> um, that's an intense story how fucking unfortunate but i mean like everything led you to hear us talking yeah. about it so well the, also the the other the other really cool thing too is that it it really put like material items in perspective for me because it really felt like such mm -hmm. a blow that i just i learned to not to try not to have too much attachment to something. Yeah. You know, I have other guitars now that if I lost, I'd be like, well, okay, whatever. But my Rickenbacker would probably hurt pretty badly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, so much so, and I can relate too. It's like even just back, you know, flying a ton and having stuff get messed up in flight or you, it, you yeah. know, the flight case comes down the ramp and it looks like TSA took an ax to it. You're like, what? Mm -hmm. This did not get dropped casually on the tarmac. What happened here? <laughs> um, and so after that, I just like, I was like, you know what? I'm not buying, I'm not like, if I'm, if I'm buying it, it's just good. It's just something that's expensive. It's going to stay at home. Uh, the stuff that I can do, it's just like my less, I uh, like my Les Paul studios and my like thousand dollar Hagstrom can get the job done on the road. And if something happened to them, it would not be like any great significant blow because we learned yeah, yeah. stuff usually happens to them if you're out there doing it long enough. I you know? I, I, um, yeah, probably if, if things like get much busier in that respect, that's probably something I should really consider. Um, so well, now we've heard so much. I mean, I feel like feel like i'm attached to this rickenbacker now. <laughs> yeah i, I feel uh, like i want to look out for it that's kind of like why i need to play it though at the same time <laughs> i know exactly yeah, I, it, I totally get the itch yeah um uh we're we're, we're team rickenbacker give yeah, us yeah. the rose give us the rose yeah, all right yeah, yeah. last um, bachelor reference all right <laughs> uh the, the rickenbacker does get the rose no indeed tom well 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 played sir damn Thanks, guys. Cody, well, thanks, man. We'll um, we'll try and shout some pictures out and um, treat that Rickenbacker well. We're excited to see what she conjures up next, dude. Yeah, I will.
Music to my ears every time